Okay, we have Bishop Elder. We excuse me. We have Bishop Robert Williams, and we have Chaplain White. So we're going to start with the bishop here, and he's going to share his experiences as, uh, as a military man, and hopefully someone that's listening who may be thinking about going into the military may be encouraged. So where did it all start? <laughs> where did it all start? How right did it all here start? in the city of Cleveland, okay. Ohio. All right. <laughs> well, actually, um, it started in in um, high school. I had a choice. I could either go to Hudson Farm for a while or I could go to the military. So I chose to go to the military. Hudson mm -hmm. Farm? Oh, yeah. You don't want to know about that one. What's that, okay. a boy's home? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. That sounds <laughs> like... it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my counselor. I had some good school counselors, and um, they advised me, you know. Really? Well, if you're going to go serve somebody, why don't you go where you can get paid to do it? <laughs> <laughs> That's how they sold it to you. That's how they sold wow. it to me. Because wow. I wasn't welcome back to the courts anymore. Okay. Because if I ever show <laughs> back up there again, it'll be another three years before I see Cleveland again. Well, so, you, so you were coerced? <laughs> I was coerced. He was gently encouraged. You, yeah. say, that's what you say he was gently encouraged? Yeah, yeah. gently encouraged. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, that's, that's coercion so, to me, it sounds yeah. like. I mean, they didn't give you a choice. They say, you know, you yeah. can go to the military, you go to jail. That is a choice. That's exactly how they tell you. That's a choice. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. But they, they let me finish high school. Were you in that much trouble that... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was always in trouble. I was always <laughs> doing something. I mean, that, that's I, I, good that they offered you an alternative like that. Well, and I'm glad you made they, the right choice because uh, it's well, not. The thing no. about it really is they saw the potential in me to mm -hmm. do good. You know, e mm -hmm. even though I was angry, I had an attitude. You know, being on the streets. You know, and uh, then again, I can tip my hat to my son because if he had not been born out of wedlock, mm -hmm. you know. I probably would have ended up in jail somewhere. Wow. Now, how long but did you serve you, you in, in the military? Uh, are you still well, considered I, I, active I, I, or are you just... No, I'm retired military now. Okay. I spent 23 years active. Okay. Okay. And actually, I spent a year in the um, Army Reserves here in Cleveland, Ohio, the 256 General Hospital out in Palmer. Mm -hmm. That was in between services, you know. But, you know, again, if it had not been for my son being born out of wedlock and I wanted to change and do something better, you know, to be with him, I, I probably would have been dead or end up in jail. Well, because I tell you, when I turned, I, I didn't really believe I would mm -hmm. turn 21, live to see 21. Right. But mm -hmm. then when I did, I thank God, you know, because I, I was already in the military at that time, you know. Right. But um, long story short, I spent, um, I started out at Fort Polk, Louisiana. Ooh. <coughs> yeah, <yep>. that's, that's <laughs> where know, all of. You know about that? That was my first duty station, yep. That's where all the Vietnam soldiers go. When you, when you go to Fort Polk, you know you're going to Vietnam. You know, mm. no doubt about really? it. Oh, yes. Oh. That's where they train you to prepare you to go to um, Vietnam. Okay. Okay. Then after that, you know, I finished that and did my little short tour and came back and, and then I had a I had a short tour in Germany, but I made it a three year tour because I chose to get married in Germany. And then because I got married I picked up another couple of years in Germany which turned out to be beneficial for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I thank God for that. You know, and then, um, hey, it was on a the roll then, you wow. know. And when I woke up one day, I had did half of uh, 20 years, and I said, well, wow, sure. I done done this, so I should. And it done went that fast. I could do the other half. Now, you, but actually, then after, you, you actually went into the Vietnam War. Oh, yeah. You went there? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, because, I, I, you know, I've done a lot of <coughs> research on that war. Mm -hmm. and, Pretty tough, rough. A lot of people. Yeah. yeah, I had two. Uncles. Well, I was on special assignment there. You okay. know, I had two uncles who um, who served in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Two of them yeah. they served in Vietnam. And it's amazing uh, they came back. I, I was on a special duty assignment there. You know, because 
when I finished basic, I couldn't stay in a unit with other basic trainees, so they found a duty assignment for me while I was waiting on the clearance to come. And it seemed like it took ever for me to get cleared to go, move on to go to school. I had already, well, been put out of basic, that my basic was cut short, of course, you know, things happen, okay? okay. But long story short, you wait, know. Wait, 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 wait. We'll read, we'll, we'll read <laughs> wait, between wait, the I, lines. No, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You, were, you, you say basic was cut short. Basic was cut short. Basic was cut I mean, short. Basic training? Basic training was cut um, like two and a half weeks short because there was an incident that happened in the city and it couldn't be tied to anyone, you know, because oh. there were other military personnel who shouldn't have been involved was involved. So, therefore, they came out and told us, Y'all got to go. We Actually, we was on bivouac, and we was winding things down. So they said, hey, look, you guys got to go back in, get cleaned up. We're going to test you and get you guys out of here. And that they did, you know, because oh, okay. we were causing the government too much money. Wow. Oh, Anytime. Okay. Uh, now, Reverend, I'm thinking when they cut it short, I thought they put you in the Navy SEALs or something. I'm thinking you was... You know, you were such a military they probably they put you in a special unit. They, they probably <laughs> wish we was in like Navy. <laughs> 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 a special unit, yeah. Yeah, that's a special unit, okay. <laughs> Not for that. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, it, I mean, I, I, I can look back over the experiences, you know, and um, after growing up and maturing in the military, you know, and learning uh, some helps. things. Oh, yeah, discipline. believe me. You got discipline. Oh, yeah. You? Well, I mean. I hate to discipline, not not that they discipline me, you know, but I, I, I you know, well, I can make my own. It had, it had, it had a little bit of something to do with it, because you were yeah, they, they, before you they, went in there. Yeah, I was disciplined before I went in there. Well, I, I just you, you because I just refused to do right. Right, you refused. You know, it's like oh, so you weren't no, disciplined. No, it's, it's, like, it's like save folks. You know, folks get uh -oh, saved, uh -oh, uh -oh, but go. they <laughs> just refuse to <laughs> do right. You know, it's not that I didn't know. <laughs> you know what I was doing. I knew what I was doing. You know, mm -hmm. and I mean, just like church folks, they know better, but that's what they see, choose see, to do. See, Chapman, you know, he's trying to put it on the church. Folks. <laughs> no, I'm not putting it on the church <laughs> folks <laughs> because I was he one of them a church folks. Like, that's <laughs> all. Okay, well, well, he he push him over <laughs> and you know. Put him on a straight and narrow and, so he can. Yeah, okay. and and, and, and I, I was loud mouth, you know, and mm -hmm. boastious and. I, I, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I stood up to some folks I shouldn't have, you know. Yeah. But again, as you grow, you learn. You learn, amen, you know. amen. And I learned, you know. And but I thank God for the experience because as I progressed in rank, I was able to look back over my life and help other young soldiers right. that was coming up through the rank, you know. Okay. And so I, I could look out for them and make things happen for them, you so know. So you did twenty years. Twenty three years. Twenty three. years. <laughs> Yes. Years, but I but after a while I enjoyed it because I was able to. That was my ministry to to serve soldiers to help soldiers. You know because you just don't know the many different trials and tribulations they go through trying to make it in the military. You mm -hmm. know, but but I mean by the grace of God I made it. You know so I can reach out and reach back wow. and help another soldier because I can see him coming up in those same errors and same mistakes that I made when I was coming up. Mm -hmm. But it was by the grace of God that he delivered me and, you know, and spared me. So what was your mm -hmm. rank when you came out? Mm -hmm. I was a master sergeant master when sergeant. I Is came out. Is that the highest yeah. rank? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, that's a non-commissioned officer. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. So President is the highest. Uh, <laughs> 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 but now when Commander you say, in what, chief, right? Commander in say, chief. Uh, what were you, a master sergeant? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. When you say a non-commissioned officer, what mm -hmm. exactly is that? It's an officer that's not commissioned, okay? Mm -hmm. So, in other, in other words, they call us lifers, but we have what we call an ETS day. They have an indefinite date mm -hmm, for their um, enlistment to start. And, mm -hmm. and even though we still have to put in a request to be released from the service, you know, just like an officer do. Mm -hmm. ha, am I right? Have yeah. to put in a request to be released because now you belong to the government. And they can say yes or they can say no, you know. Right. 
And that's that's and how you got went about retiring, getting out on. You just decided it was enough, and you just well, I, I decided to retire again because I was I was learning too much, and I was getting involved in too much, and and I can't talk about it, but the thing is, it was time to go. Okay. <laughs> it gets to that point, you know, it, it's time to go. I'll mm -hmm. tell you some of those things, maybe off the air, but mm -hmm. it, it, you know when it's time to go. Okay. Okay, you know, like some, if you keep track of the news, like Colin Powell, you know, he knew when it was yeah. time to, to go, go okay. you know. Right, e right. Even after he left the military and then he still served up under the president, he knew it w when it was time to quit. He might not tell you why he's quitting, right, right. but but you know it's, he just it's knew time, it was time to go. And he didn't even mm -hmm. run for president or anything. He was a great president. No, he that's that's not for him. He got out. Mm -hmm. yeah. no. he got out. Mm -hmm. okay. But it was some, I had some good assignments, you know. Um, so you said Fort Polk, Germany. I, I did Fort Polk, Vietnam, Vietnam. from Vietnam, Vietnam to Germany, Germany, from Germany to Fort Hood. Uh, and from Fort Hood to Korea, and from Korea to where I go after Korea. I'm waiting for number no. Five. I, no, <laughs> I went to I, I I went from where did I, no I didn't go to Korea. You really? didn't use. I, I went I went to Korea, but I was in South Carolina before I went. Okay. To Korea, I went to Germany to Fort Hood, from Fort Hood. Were you at Jackson? Yeah, that was more my second okay. term. Wow. Okay. So you've been... No, when I left Fort Hood... Still trying to figure them out. When I left Fort Hood, I, I that's when I went to the reserves. Okay. Ninth Signal. Yeah, Ninth Signal. No. No, that wasn't Fort Hood. That was Fort Lewis, Washington. From Germany to Fort Lewis, Washington. And then from Fort Lewis, Washington to Cleveland. And then from Cleveland to Fort Jackson. And then from Fort Jackson to Korea. And then from Korea to Fort Hood. And then from Fort Hood to Germany. And then from Germany to Fort Stewart. And then from Fort Stewart to Panama. And then <laughs> from Panama to Aberdeen, and then from Aberdeen to Bosnia, from Bosnia to Croatia, and then from Croatia to Hungary, and then back to Georgia, Fort Stewart. And that was your last stop? No, Aberdeen was my last stop. Okay. Active you, you duty. Been, you've mm -hmm. been you've been a lot of places. But, then after, <laughs> but after I did my active duty time, I did some contracting time okay. overseas, still working for the government. So some of that was contracting too. Some After Aberdeen. After Aberdeen. It was contracting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this: Where, where, um, where was your favorite spot? Panama. And why? Panama and why? Wow. Panama. Because I love hot weather Ugh. all year round. Okay. And then the economy is very, very inexpensive. Is it? Oh, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. And then it's not far from the United States. So okay. I can just hop on a plane and be here in a couple of hours. So you had a slight vacation and then while well, you're hanging out there in the tropics. Well, I had some in-between duty assignments, just mm -hmm. like, well, like it was when I was in um, Fort Hood and Fort Stewart. And also, those were your support units. Right. In other words, you're the first to go, the last to come back yep. because you're supporting other. Pushing everybody else yeah. in or out. So you were an army. I was army. So yeah. where were but the we supported not we supported yeah. Navy, Marines, Marines, and Air Force. Right. Exactly. But we did more Marines than we did any of the others. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know what? I heard a young man talk about the, the military versus the five-fold ministry. Mm -hmm. And it's so mm -hmm. awesome how he compared the two and how mm -hmm. he said that the, the army is like the pastors because they maintain mm -hmm. what the apostle or the Marines went in to obtain. Mm -hmm. The army comes in 
with their bases and mm-hmm. plants their bases throughout the country. It was a, yeah, just a great analogy, yeah. and, it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's no wonder uh, you became a pastor and, and mm-hmm. things like that. But I want to hear from this lady, man. Well, we're going to hear from her, but I need to ask him one more question, and we're going to go to video, then we're going to hear also, from you. But okay. I also wrote, when I was in school, I, I wrote a, um, a dissertation on kingdom government. Yeah. And I compare that with the military. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay, well, listen, we're going to go back to video. We are? Yeah. Oh, well, hey, man. We're going to hear from Chaplin. We want to hear her stories as well, because she actually did two tours over in Iraq. Wow. So uh, we want to hear from her as well. Well, we're going back to video. Y'all, y'all stay tuned with Evening Praise. Amen. Don't touch that mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those in between. Okay. Okay, you're good. Those in between supports. Okay. You 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 know. We just have to be careful how we we deal with those, you know. That your phone? Oh, that yeah, that was that was your wife that who texted me and said, "Tell Reb to speak up." So that's so why I turned his volume up a little bit. Streaming. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they do me like that, even in church, you know. They have to turn the mic up on me. So I could be right up on it, and they say, you, you, you're not loud enough. And then they'll tell the people in the back to turn the mic up on me. I don't know. You can turn that hmm? speaker up. Well, turn it up. Okay. Looks like we were going down the same track there until you veered off. Where, so where, where I pole, get off at? <laughs> well, I did Fort Polk, Germany. No, let me get the back. Fort Jackson, training. Uh-huh. Fort Jackson. Then I was reserves in Warren, Ohio. Uh-huh. Then I did Fort Polk, Iraq, so, Germany, Iraq, mm-hmm. um, Fort Jackson, Fort Leonard Wood. Okay. And then I got out at Fort Leonard Wood. I didn't make Leonard Wood. Uh-huh. Yeah, I didn't expect to do Leonard Wood either. Came up on orders for that, and I just busted out laughing. Did what? What's the plan? I came up on orders to go to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Mm-hmm. And I, the guy that gave me the orders, I just started laughing. Is that mm-hmm. bad? Or good? Is that no, bad I just bad? thought it was funny. Because oh. usually that's where they send you when they're ready to push you out, uh-huh. get you out yes. of the service. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. So I knew then that it was mm-hmm. it would have been it, it was time to go when I went there. But I was trailing. There was another chaplain that was we were on the same trail because mm-hmm. we were both in Germany together, Iraq together. And then when he came up on orders for Leonard Wood, he came in. He showed me his orders, and I handed him mine, and so we just both yeah. started laughing. I said, oh, Yeah, we had a couple, of, a couple of guys that, that I came up in the military so with that's, like that's that. The, that's the way of saying, okay, we done with y'all. For, for some, yeah. They uh-huh. kind of push you. They, we call them places to die. So I'm not going to say that on here, but <laughs> that's usually what they do. <clears throat> some people make it out of their lives. Some people yeah. don't. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I almost didn't make it out of Vietnam alive, and I almost didn't make it out of Panama alive. Mm-hmm. But, but by the grace of God, He brought mm-hmm. me Get through. And then when I got dropped off in Honduras, that was. <laughs> it. Yeah, they find those little off the wall mm-hmm. spots to throw you in. Yeah, yeah they did. Okay. But, um, because when I was at Polk. They were going to send me to Korea, Mm -hmm. but then the war started, Mm -hmm. and my orders got canceled. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Well, praise the Lord, we are back. We are back. That was B.B. Winans, When I Found Love. All right. The Cindy song. Yeah. Take it away, Rev. All right. We have our (laughs) other guest here, Chaplain White, who is also an Army veteran. So we're going to ask... She did two tours in Iraq, and boy, I'm glad I look. 
Um, we're glad to have her with us, and we are celebrating our veterans, and we say thank you all for your service and your courage. So where did it all start with you? It all started in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when I was um, finishing up seminary okay. at um, Oral Roberts. Okay. And the recruiter came in, and I would always get in line just to hear what they had to say. I really mm -hmm. didn't have an interest in it. I just wanted to hear what they had to say. And uh, the chaplain recruiters would come to the seminary mm -hmm. to recruit chaplain, to recruit uh, ministers to come into the chaplaincy. Mm -hmm. And so I went over there and I got in a line and, and I went to the, the little briefing and I was listening in and I thought, oh, it might be a little interesting. I don't think so. I kind of want to stick around here. I like to travel, but I didn't know if I wanted to travel that way. Mm -hmm. So I listened to the recruiter and and got done, and he handed me the little pamphlet, and I was like, okay, well, I'll think about it. And then my professor pulled me out, and he said, you're not doing this. You're going to come here and teach. <laughs> and that was it. So I just said, okay, well, that sounds good to me. Uh, probably about a couple of months before graduation, one of my classmates who was, at the time I didn't know, was an Air Force chaplain mm -hmm. in the reserves, took me to Tinker Air Force Base mm -hmm. to just look around mm -hmm. and I met with one of the wing commanders there and he started talking and, and then we found out I found out he was a Christian and it was something that he said while we were talking that kind of speared me in the heart and he said this is probably one of the most rewarding ministries you could be in mm -hmm. Jesus is needed in this area mm -hmm. and we need y'all to bring him here and when he said that, it was like, Woof. <laughs> and I just sat there. That when I came back from from Tinker, I just kind of sat in the room and I thought, Lord, I can't shake this thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do now. So, do you, is this what you want me to do? Because if it is, then I'll go. But if it's not, then I need to know. Mm -hmm. So um, I talked to another person who happened to be an Air Force veteran, and um, one of my one of my good friends. And um, she said, well, you probably don't want to do Air Force, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to go in the Air Force. Okay. She said, you probably might want to look at the Army. And I knew, you know, our brother was in the Army. He served for a number of years as a medic. And I thought, well, I probably don't want to do Army. I want to go Air Force. I like them. I like hanging out with them. It, was, it seemed like it was a great time over there mm -hmm. at Tinker. The next day, an, an Army recruiter shows up at the door. Mm -hmm. And he says, I understand you want to go into the Army. And I said, well, who are you and why are you at my door? And who called you? And he told me it was my friend from the Air Force. He said, well, you know, let me talk to you a little bit and, and see if you might want to munch on this. And while he's talking to me, this other guy is calling a chaplain recruiter, Army chaplain recruiter. Mm -hmm. And he's giving him my information. And so that night I sat there, I said, okay, Lord, we got Air Force, we have Army, or we have nothing at all. Tell me what I need to do mm -hmm. because I can't shake this thing. Mm -hmm. Evidently, this is the direction you want me to go in, so I need to know which direction to go. So after graduation, uh, before graduation, I went to the Army recruiting station there in Oklahoma. And next thing you know it, I'm going through the medical station, what they call MEPS. Mm -hmm. And they're doing all of their physical exams and everything. And then that next day I get a call from the chaplain recruiter and he wants to come and talk to me. So I talk to him. So by graduation, I'm thinking, okay, well maybe this is the direction you want me to go in. You want me to go into the chaplaincy, military, don't know which branch. So when I got back to Cleveland, I put in my packet for the Air Force. Because I was determined to go Air Force. Mm. I put all that information in and put the packet through. And then a couple of months later, I get a phone call from the Air Force. Um, and they said, well, you don't have enough ministerial experience for us. So we can't bring you on. We need to at least get you into our reserves before we can bring you on active duty, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to go active duty. Mm -hmm. Now, this was at Air Force? This was Air Force. Really? Mm -hmm. I called. Five minutes after I, I got off the phone with him, the the Army 
called and said, you don't have enough ministerial experience for us to bring you on active duty, but we want to pull you in. We need to put you in the reserves. We can do it right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, so maybe you want me to go Army. Mm -hmm. All right. So he said, I need a decision now. I said, okay, put the packet through. So he put the packet through. He said, okay, you're on board. You are now a first lieutenant chaplain mm -hmm. in the United States Army. Congratulations. We're going to put you in this reserve unit here. We need to put you through basic training for for officers, you know, officer basic training. And it's different for chaplains, officer basic training, because we have to not, we have to learn what the soldiers know. So we have to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So you have a bunch <laughs> of ministers coming in learning how to be soldiers. Mm -hmm. So they had to put us through basic training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in January, I can't remember the year, I think it was 1999, I believe, because I was commissioned in 98, November 98, 99. I found myself at Fort Jackson in the chaplain officer's basic scores, okay. going through basic training. Mm -hmm. The first two weeks there, I cried. <laughs> and I thought, this is not God. I do not want to be here. I do not like getting up 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I don't want to go through this physical training because, you know, they really beat you yes. when you're in there. They have drill sergeants mm -hmm. in the chaplain's officer corps that do what drill sergeants mm -hmm. do for basic training. Yes. Mm -hmm. And those guys rolled us. Mm -hmm. And I remember calling back home one night and I, I spoke to to Kenna mm -hmm. and I called him on the phone like, I don't want to be here anymore I'm tired <laughs> my body's hurting I don't want to do this anymore mm -hmm. and he he told me on the phone he said you signed up for it you wanted this suck it up and keep going <laughs> and he hung up <laughs> sound like military what did he do what did he do you know no, he, maybe if you talk to Tim maybe Tim would have said something. I would have said the same thing <laughs> And this is coming from a guy because weeks before I went into went into the basic training, I, I spoke to him, mm -hmm. and he was a little upset. He said, why did you go Army? Why didn't you go Air Force? I said, I tried Air Force, mm -hmm. but I couldn't get in there, so I just went ahead and went Army because mm -hmm. you, you survived it, so I thought maybe I could too. But, um, yeah, he, he hung up, mm -hmm. and I said, okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And, and the Lord was gracious. He hooked me up with... Uh, oh, a lady who was also going through the chaplaincy who was prior service. And um, she was from Ohio. And we became close friends. As a matter of fact, she's she's my battle buddy mm -hmm. in Ohio. So <clears throat> she showed she kept me under her wing and she showed me the ropes. And uh, I got through through basic training. Mm -hmm. Praying, crying and running. <laughs> mm, wow. So after we got done with basic, I was assigned to a unit here in um in a reserve unit here in Ohio and I stayed with them for about a year and a half, put my packet back in for active duty status, was picked up for active duty and um got the orders and my orders said Fort Polk, Louisiana. Mm. And I thought, no. Why? What's wrong with what was so well, you'll tell us so. <laughs> well, Fort Polk is a combat training okay. facility. All right. Mm -hmm. And and the unit mm -hmm. I was going to be assigned to was, um, they were highly deployable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and and it was a rough unit. Yeah. You know, okay. I was in a cavalry mm -hmm. unit. Yeah, mm -hmm. So you already knew mm -hmm. that. This unit was rough before you assigned. Yeah, you said, oh, already oh, yeah. Who they you, were. you know yeah. when you when you're assigned to them, you know what okay. what their yeah. background is. Oh. Mm -hmm. I knew the unit. <clears throat> okay. So when when I mm -hmm. when I got there at Fort Polk, it, I had to look at things differently. I had to look at it as if, okay, God, mm -hmm. you are in control of all this. You know where you need to place me. You placed me here for a reason. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're going to keep me while I'm in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had to look at it like that. If I looked at it any other way, I would have been screaming and kicking and trying to make drug deals to get mm -hmm. out of this unit mm -hmm. or out of this assignment. I just had to look at it as, God, you want me here right now. This is where you need, this is where you want to work. Okay, I got it. So I went to the unit. And it was confirmed a couple of months later while I was in the unit. The um, 
my command sergeant major came up to me and she she was leaving mm -hmm. but she was retiring mm -hmm. she came up to me and she handed me a small card and you know command sergeant majors a lot of them don't talk a lot and they don't mm -hmm. compliment you as much but she gave me a small card and on that little card it said god sent you here you needed to be here we needed you mm -hmm. and when i saw that card i was like okay. that was you mm -hmm. all right, right. <laughs> so um I stayed with them, and I thought that usually you don't stay with a unit longer than two years, maybe mm. two and a half, uh -huh. depending on who you're with. I wound up staying with this unit for four years okay. because during that time, that's when the war started. So I went to, I went to Iraq with this unit, mm -hmm. and um, it's funny because I was supposed to be heading off to Korea during that time. I already done my two and a half years. And when my orders came down for Korea, my orders also came, our orders also came down for Iraq, mm -hmm. for um, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Mm -hmm. So my orders were canceled for Korea and they said, you're not going to mm -hmm. Korea, you're going to Iraq. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well evidently that's where we're going to go. That's where the Lord wants you to be. He wants me with this unit in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. You know, explain something. To you. Yeah. This 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 thing that's going off in Iraq. Uh, we're blaming now, or the people are blaming the Bush administration. That's when you went there, correct? Right. On the fact that they went into Iraq and did what they did. Now we get ISIL because of the the. Uh, I guess because of the, the wars and the fightings, the things mm -hmm. that that took place in Iraq. By stripping them of their government, now you have ISIS and ISIL coming in and trying to trying to become the next government. Mm -hmm. Is is that any Levit? Is there any truth to that? I don't. I don't know. I can't say. I don't know the the politics behind all of that. Um, from my point of view. I think that all that was there long before we even rolled up in there. It was. Right. It was mm -hmm. just a matter of time mm -hmm. before it, it displayed mm -hmm. itself like yes. it is now. Mm -hmm. right. So all that was already set up centuries this ago. Yeah, this is years. this is a yes. yeah. This is um, a history. 30, this is forty a, years ago. So why did you get involved? Back. Well, why, did, why, did, back. why did you guys get involved? Have no clue. Really? <laughs> Other down, than what we just were told. Just go and do what you told, and yeah, mm -hmm. shut up and roll. Wow. Go and do what you're told and, and, and make sure you, you and everybody else get back alive. And that was pretty much all you had to focus on at mm -hmm. that point. We couldn't get into the politics of everything. Right. We just had to make sure everybody got back. That was the goal. Do your mm -hmm. job, get them back. Right. And that's all we could focus on at that point. Well, what was your job at that time? I was a chaplain. I mean, but what was your job as a chaplain? What, what did you do specifically? Um, besides the services, pretty much what a minister would do at a church, mm -hmm. the my unit and those that were assigned to my unit and the um, civilian employees were my congregation. Mm -hmm. So I functioned as a pastor in uniform. That's basically what you are. Mm -hmm. And um, I would do counseling uh, whenever I needed to do that. But it was mainly the spiritual side, the services and um all, all the stuff that pastors yeah. do. That's yeah. what I did. Okay, and so your congregation, was it a Protestant? Was it Catholic? Was it, uh, what, what was it? it was just a congregation, whoever mm -hmm. wanted to attend. I was under the Protestant umbrella, if right. you want to put a flavor on it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, anybody that was Protestant could come to that service. Even if you were Catholic, you can come to that service. It didn't right. matter. Right. You just had mm -hmm. to serve everybody. Yes. Right. And everybody was welcome to attend. And what about our Muslim brothers? When they if they there? wanted oh. to show up, they could go. But there's sure. Muslim chaplains. There's Muslim mm -hmm. chaplains. I mean, they have mm -hmm. one, or they're, they're trying to at this at this time, trying to get one for each mm -hmm. um, faith group. Right. So, you know, we, we were there to help them on the spiritual side of their yes. journey in the military. Mm -hmm. wow. That's what we did. So did you see combat at all? I didn't do, no. Because no. chaplains are not, they're called non-combatants. Right. Non we don't carry mm -hmm. a weapon. Yeah. Okay. But we have assistants who are called chaplains' yes. assistants who mm -hmm. do carry weapons, oh, okay. and they're our bodyguards. Mm -hmm. Okay, basically, they help mm -hmm. us with everything else. Okay, but they, when we're out in the field or something like that, they're essentially our bodyguards. They protect us. Wow. And see so the difference between myself and chaplain 
Wyatt is she's commissioned. That is her job, a chaplain, mm -hmm. so she don't carry a weapon. Right. And that's why it's, it's surprising because I ran an Air Force um, service for three years in Panama, okay? But I'm not a chaplain. I'm, I'm an ordained minister. Right. Mm -hmm. but, this, but what I did, I did this also starting in Korea and throughout my military career. I was, was not only communications, I did full service, and I did what they call um, religious coordinators, mm -hmm. okay, job. But I could also run the church services. Okay. So, but you did have a weapon. Oh, I can carry a okay. weapon. Yeah, but it wasn't a chaplain. chaplain though. Though. Okay, it wasn't okay. okay. But you were an ordained minister. But you. Yes. Okay. There mm -hmm. were t there were times <laughs> when you had um, different units that didn't have chaplains assigned to them, mm -hmm. or services that oh, yeah. didn't have chaplains assigned to them. If they could find an ordained minister that mm -hmm. qualified for that position, then they would put them in that position mm -hmm. until a chaplain could come in and fill it. But it didn't and necessarily have to be a chaplain. It could have been just an ordained minister. It can be an ordained minister, ordained minister which, they, uh, yeah. which I was. And in Panama, right after the conflict finished in Panama, the Air Force chaplains offered that position to me because they didn't want to do it. And see, in a gospel service, that's an that's, option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's, that's not an assignment. Okay. okay. Now, I was assigned to a gospel <laughs> service. You was assigned? I yeah, was assigned. Well, they had... Yeah. They, there were chaplains assigned to it, but after this one particular chaplain, he's getting ready to rotate. So he has to find another chaplain willing to take that, that service. gospel service over. No. And none of them wanted to do it, so he came and offered it to me. Mm -hmm. You know, no, So that's chaplain. how I got the Air Force to run the Air Force uh, gospel service. So all chaplains are commissioned? <coughs> yes. Yes. Okay, and you come in as a first lieutenant? De it depends on whether you have... Um, mm -hmm enough ministerial um, years behind you mm -hmm. as far as serving as a pastor, yes. or if you have prior military experience, yes. then they'll bring you in that way. I mm -hmm. came in because I didn't have the ministerial nor the military. Mm -hmm. So I came in as a first lieutenant. By the time I came on active duty, I was um, promoted to captain okay. when mm -hmm. I came on. Mm -hmm. So you were up there in the... Uh, Not really. <laughs> We were still down here in, in little ground level there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know, ca captain is, it's a good rank to be in because you're still working with the soldiers. Mm -hmm. Once you start moving up in the ranks, mm -hmm. you get, you kind of move a little bit away from the soldiers and start getting to more, what I consider the yeah, administrative. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I enjoy my time. Well, now, let me ask you. It's a captain. Would, no, would he have to salute you? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we done. <laughs> you want to salute her, man, when you walked in the we studio. We are done right? now. Hey, so. captain. And, and we do salute. Uh -huh. So yeah. let me ask you this. What was your most difficult moment serving as a chaplain in Iraq? I mean, you did, you actually did twice. I mean, you... I mean, do you, did you ever imagine that you would have to be, you would be sent back over there after the first time? Uh, no. Or were you, okay. Because um, while I was there, the unit that I was with was there with me. Okay. So I figured, they, they we're all there together, mm -hmm. so we're not going to go back for a while. Mm -hmm. But then while I was there, I came down on orders for Germany. Mm -hmm. And... That's when I found out, once I got to Germany, that that same unit that was attached, mm -hmm. that we were attached to, was going back. Yes. Uh, and I was going back with them. And that happened yeah. in any given time. You can leave a unit and go, you can either go overseas or come back to the States, and you can get into that same unit or a supporting unit and find yourself right back overseas again. No, and I was you, always in support mm -hmm. units. No, were you the same, were you deployed to the same area that you were the first time? No. This uh, is a different area. It was a different area, but. More dangerous or? I was in, I knew that area I was going to because I'd been there before the first okay. time. So mm -hmm. I knew where I was heading. So it was familiar territory. It was familiar territory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Didn't like it, but it was familiar yes. territory. <laughs> the first time was difficult because nothing was set up over there. Mm-hmm. So, of course, you're going from scratch. Yes. You're having to put everything mm -hmm. into place. Housing, the whole nine yards. Yes. So, of course, it was difficult then because you're just, you're living off what you brought with you mm -hmm. until something else gets there. Mm -hmm. And that went on for a while. The second time, things were already set up. But the difficulty there was that 
your enemy now knows who you are mm -hmm. and, and kind of knows how you function. So now they're trying to pick holes on how to get to you. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that the first time I went, the difficulty was um, going there and not kn not knowing what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. okay. And mm -hmm. being in a support unit, you know, you're supporting everybody else. Mm -hmm. So you, in some instances, we had to support ourselves as far as security. So you were just sitting. You, I mean, you just you had to be over there just in case. We had to be there. Okay. And so we were you working. Weren't, you weren't actually involved in any warfare. You just the support unit was just like the backup. The unit. the support they do, um, they don't go out there and fight like infantry mm -hmm. and, okay. and on the squad yeah. units and stuff mm -hmm. like that to do. Um, no, they don't do that. Not the squad units, but the um, I think that's what I meant to say. Anyway, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. But they if they're out there on what they call a log pack, if they're pushing supplies to other places. Mm -hmm. They have to. They have to be aware of what's going on. And sometimes mm -hmm. there was some, there was some fighting going on there because w you're going to attack the, the supply mm -hmm. line. Yeah, so because you, you never off. know. Right. Mm -hmm. You always have to be. Now prepared. you weren't just limited to just um, chaplain duty as far as conducting services. Was there a little more to that as far as active duty in your, in your capacity? That that was it. Okay. I mean, services are the. Are the main thing I would say services and counseling, and counseling. were the counseling. main thing mm -hmm. there but you also did other things you did um, memorial services or ceremonies mm -hmm. um, you did some you did a lot of training okay. for them uh, I was and I had to get trained in a lot of that suicide training mm -hmm. um, critical Brief, incident yes, debriefings mm -hmm. um, counseling for um, bereavement I mean mm -hmm. you had to get certified yes. to do all that stuff so um, marriage counseling, we had to do that, a lot of that. So you, you, you got that training. So there were other things that I did, but the bulk of my, my duties were the spiritual side of it. And that's okay. why I tried to stick to, because I knew that that was important, particularly being deployed. If their spirits weren't right, then everything else was going to go wrong. So not only did I have to keep myself spiritually fed, I had to try to find ways to keep them spiritually fed mm -hmm. as well so they could keep going. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and that's pretty much how we, we kept each other kept each other um sane. <laughs> <laughs> that way. Okay. So how did you did. how did you manage to remain stable yourself? Because I know there was much I mean, people mm -hmm. over there people over there dying. Yeah. And yeah. And so, um, psychologically I know that had to be a great strain on you. To mm -hmm. have to deal with families who've lost, or mm -hmm. I mean, when you talk about family, you're really talking about a unit who is a family, right? Yes. And one one mm -hmm. family unit is 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 gone now has been has been killed. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of grief. Mm -hmm. We we lost um we lost some soldiers in our unit, and a lot of times when there was a death or if there was uh, someone who was injured seriously injured. There were moments when I had to step away. I, I kind of did the Jesus thing. Mm -hmm. I went off by myself yes. somewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, I would just talk to the Lord for a while. I would let the soldiers know, give me about two hours, mm -hmm. and then I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. First, I'd make sure they were okay for a minute. Mm -hmm. And it, usually they would say, yeah, yeah, we're good. You know, just tell us where we need to be, and, and we'll come and meet you there. And so I would go off somewhere and... and Try to get my head on straight and By get my yourself, spirit right. Have, yeah, you didn't have any protection. You just went off. Was well, that, usually, usually I'm in a protected area. Yeah, okay. okay. so I'm, I was good. No, I didn't run off. So okay. yeah. no, <laughs> willy dilly. That wasn't too no. smart or no, no, safe. No, uh, <laughs> no. 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 See, she's one still you said you had to get away by yourself. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're on a camp. Okay, mm -hmm. so I would go somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, quiet somewhere on the camp, and then I would just kind of get myself together, and then I would come back. And then gather the soldiers around who needed to, you know, just to talk or to let some steam off about what just happened. Yes. And then I would make myself available. And then every time I would feel myself getting drained, I would go off again and, okay. and get myself and then come back. Mm -hmm. There were people there. Um, I had support there. Mm -hmm. You know, there were other ordained ministers there that weren't in the military. Or that were in the military, but they were ordained and mm -hmm. they were serving as non-commissioned officers yes. or officers. Okay, such as you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That we would come together and we would pray or we would talk or you know try to keep each other going. Mm -hmm. okay. But you know there were there were times when I just needed to to go away, get apart, and try to 
to deal with the grief myself because you know some of the people that we lost I knew mm -hmm. okay that's what I was gonna ask you was anything personal I mean oh yeah it was personal. oh yeah it was it was very the the first time when we, we lost our first our first soldier um, that was my my very first memorial ceremony that I had to do and I would not only was I grieving but I had to run the ceremony yes mm -hmm. and you lose your first soldier there mm -hmm. Everybody high ranking says to show up at these ceremonies. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you got generals and everybody <laughs> yes. else sitting up in there. And if you mess this thing up, you're mm -hmm. you're pretty much mud. Mm -hmm. Your name is mud at that point. So mm -hmm. we had to make sure everything was running right and everything was in order. So for that first one, it was rough because that was our first one. Mm -hmm. So not only did I have to deal with the soldiers in that particular company, I had to deal with the, the leadership in there because they were really grieving. That was mm -hmm. one of theirs. Mm -hmm. So you with them for months, mm -hmm. checking on them, counseling with them, letting them talk, mm -hmm. let them blow off steam, you know, rant, ray, whatever they need to do to get it out of their system. Mm -hmm. You know, you let them grieve and, and tell them they have permission to do that because a lot of times they would shut down and you say, hey, look, you can grieve. It's all right. Then when we lost the second one, um, that one really hit hard because um, we were supposed to be going home. Mm -hmm. and that month, actually, mm -hmm. we were supposed to be going home. And then we found out that we were extended for another three months mm -hmm. over there. Matter of fact, it was your wedding. <laughs> I planned to be home for your wedding. <laughs> you missed a good one. But yep. We got it on tape. So yep. you can so you belong to the happen. government, you I know. move, as they say. Did so, you share some cake? No. No, he didn't say no, that. It's all right. It's okay. It's been 11 years. <laughs> 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 he puts a freezer yeah. and a piece of well, cake. We'll, 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 <laughs> be, uh, we'll bake another one. It's all good. It. But see, that was the joy we, we I had so get some of that. in serving. <laughs> because not only as I served as a soldier, I could serve as a chaplain's assistant and, and uh, minister, support yeah. uh -huh. at, from the ministerial side of the house, too. Because, I mean, as, as I hear her speak, Yes, we've had to go in and talk to a lot of the chaplains and even support them in carrying out memorial services and stuff because it do become so overwhelming, you know, that they need that support. Mm -hmm. And so many times I would find myself we would get away and we would just minister to them because they needed that, you know. And I, I thank God for that because my first tour in Germany, I, I, even though I, I was saved, you know, I, I wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit, but that's where, as I, I call myself as a prodigal, when I say I was saved, but I still wasn't doing right, right you right, know. Right. And that's yeah, where yeah. God met me in a foreign country right. as a prodigal. No, my wife, when my wife and I grew up together here in Cleveland. Oh, but you got married in Germany. But we got, got married in Germany. In Germany. Okay. I, I sent for her, and she came to Germany. Okay. And we got married in Germany. Wow. And we've been together ever since. Well, Captain, you married? No. Mm -hmm. No? No, 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 Mr. Captain? No. Then? No. <laughs> he, no. He plays. <laughs> no. We want to we scope him before. No. <laughs> we get four brothers that want to check him out. Uh, the one she ain't getting married. Yeah. got five brothers. Five <laughs> brothers that want to check him out. Oh, my goodness. Check him out first. But it's time up. for a video. Yeah, time for a video. Yeah. <laughs> Change the subject. <laughs> But we were blessed to be, even though being in Germany, our, our second tour in Germany, we were blessed to be able to establish two ministries in Germany, ministry in Korea. And, of course, the ministry in Panama was already established when we got there. But because of the conflict, we had to reestablish that ministry wow. because it had been divided and, and, and cut because of the war that was going on. So evangelists so, traveled with you? Oh, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why they used to travel, and they they always mm -hmm. going places. Yeah, wow. yeah she, I, she, I think she went everywhere with me, but Korea. Okay. And then when I did contracting work after I retired, she didn't go on those tours because mm -hmm. mm -hmm, those was combat area okay. tours. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
know. So actually, we only got a few minutes left there. Right? Well, first of all, I want to give a great big shout out to Elder who's streaming. Hey, Elder. Um, God bless Hello. you. Thank you for tuning in. Also to my brother Kenneth, who also served yep. in the military, and I also had a father who served in the military as well. Mm -hmm. And so, congratulations mm -hmm. to and yeah. thank you all for your courage. My father's been gone for a while, but mm -hmm. thank him as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he served in the CAV unit too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Numerous right. family members, uncles who oh. also served. They want to me. But um, I, I, once again, I do thank you for you, you all's courage. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you all lived long enough to come mm -hmm. back home. <laughs> and I guess the one question I want to ask before we close is, is there anything you would have done different mm -hmm. today? I mean, what would it be in maybe two, three For short me, months? I don't think so because I've come to learn the importance and understanding the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, and therefore, you you submit your ways unto him, and he will direct your path, mm -hmm. you know. But I do want to salute Judge Sarah J. Harper. Amen. Because mm -hmm. she, paid, she played a great, a, a, a great play in my life when I was a young soldier, mm -hmm. fresh in the military. Mm -hmm. I, I was here in Cleveland, and again, still maturing, but I had gotten into some trouble. Mm -hmm. And I had to go before her, and she asked me one question, when are you supposed to be leaving for Germany? And of course, it was in the next couple of days, and she dismissed all the charges wow. against me, you know, because I would have really been up creek without a paddle, you know, if she'd have <laughs> locked me away, because I would have had to serve that time, and then when I got finished with that, if they didn't release me to the military, and when they finally released me, then I would have had to go to the military and serve time. But she dropped all charges against me. Wow. But I tell you, when I came yeah. back to Cleveland, I got on the phone and I thanked her for what she did for me. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 Any regrets? Yeah. No, not at all. Um, I believe that was assigned when I was assigned where I was supposed to be assigned. Mm -hmm. and, and God kept me in those assignments. Yes, he even did. during the difficult times mm -hmm. of them, and he knew when to release me. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't change a thing. I enjoyed my time mm -hmm. in there. It was hard, um, but it was necessary. Yes. So the rewarding factor for you is that you were able to do God's will, mm -hmm. and you understood right. that better as you begin to serve. Absolutely. And, and he became mm -hmm. real to me. Okay. Wow, that's 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 a powerful testimony. Man. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's just amazing that sometimes you have to go far distance. The Lord will just like Abraham mm -hmm. go to a place where I'll show you. Oh yeah, and didn't know where he was going, didn't yep. know where he was going to end up, mm -hmm. but in the end, you know, his faithfulness was blessed, and because mm -hmm. of that, we're blessed people mm -hmm. because of Abraham's faith. But I also salute my wife for hanging in there with oh, yes. me all God those the families, many years they because go through being too. away. Oh, yeah. Yep. She took care of the household and everything. I didn't have to worry about nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's what you have to keep reminding them. The family serve as well as the, the service family member. Serves as so you well. got to keep them. They're also, yes. you know, veterans as well. Exactly. So mm -hmm. you got the home front and you got the front. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, we got a minute now. We're going to close and we'll invite you to come worship with us at Little Star Missionary Baptist Church. 11610 Superior Avenue. Our morning service begins at 11 o'clock. And our Sunday school begins at 9.30. 7 o'clock Wednesday, we're in prayer meeting and Bible study. Now, we won't be in next Monday, but we want to wish each and every one of you a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving holiday. And remember that Thanksgiving is not just about one day. Hmm. Every day of every your life day, that you man. live, give the Lord thanks for yes. how he has blessed you and how he's kept you. In the meantime, till we meet again, we want to thank Bishop, Bless Robert you. Williams, thank we you want for to having thank us. Chaplain Cornelia White, <laughs> our engineer, Apostle James. <laughs> Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you real good, and we'll see you the following Monday after Thanksgiving, if it be the Lord's will. Be mm. good.